Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props, and I'm going to show you how to make foam look like amazing leather armor. Welcome to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn foam into heavy weathered leather armor. Try saying that five times fast. And that's because you guys reached out after my Harley Quinn videos, and you loved the textures that I was putting into that prop, and you wanted to see more of it. Well, I am happy to oblige, just continue to watch the videos. So in this one, I'm gonna show you how to take some 10 millimeter HD foam, which you of course can find over at Blick Art Materials, and turn it into something that looks just completely out of the wasteland and badass. Now, I just didn't wanna do any particular leather piece. I wanted to make something really cool. So this time around, we're making some heavy armor from Fallout 4. We got a lot to do to put this shoulder pad together, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm gonna to do to fabricate my shoulder armor is utilize my duct tape dummy. Now this is something that I built about six years ago for my Warcraft Orc build and these things are extremely valuable. If you don't have one, I highly recommend you look into it. There's lots of different tutorials on YouTube on how to go about constructing one of these. So for this, I'm gonna be using Bristol board to do a basic mock-up and then transferring that to my HD foam. Once transferred to the 10 millimeter HD foam, it can be cut out. Now for this piece to keep its curve, I'm gonna need two strips of two millimeter HD foam. While the foam is curved, these will be glued into place and will help it retain its shape. I'm gonna be heating up the foam to manipulate it and give it that curve. And remember, whenever you're heating foam, you wanna make sure that you wear your respirator and always do it in a well-ventilated area. After lightly applying the heat to the foam, it is then rolled by hand to give it a subtle curve. To help it retain this shape, I'm going to be gluing in the strips of 2mm HD foam starting in the middle. Once the middle is cured, I work my way to the outsides of the strip, and there you go. You have a piece of foam that won't go flat again. To simulate a raised lip on this piece, I use my Bristol board to cut out an additional template. The middle of this shoulder piece has some raised sections, and to fabricate these, I'm going to be using some 15mm HD foam half round dowels. These dowels are traced onto my pattern to make sure I get them properly spaced out. Once that had been cut out, I lightly transfer the template onto the shoulder armor using a pencil. Now I can easily see where the HD foam half round dowels need to be glued down. To make this all look seamless, I'm going to be doing a skinning technique using 2mm HD foam. My foam is specially designed to easily stretch without tearing to give it these complex curves. I take my template, transfer that onto the 2mm HD foam and cut that out, and then using some super glue, glue back the edge. A Dremel with a smooth sanding drum is used to knock down any high points before this gets glued down. Because I'm covering a large area, but the foam needs to stretch quite a bit and still retain its shape, I'm using some 3M High Strength 90 spray adhesive. This is generously applied to both sides and allowed to dry until it's tacky to the touch. Once dry, the foam is placed in the middle, covering the half round dowels, and then pulled all the way to the edges. To keep it clean, the edges are glued down using super glue. I use a smooth sculpting tool to press the foam directly up to the dowel. Once the 2mm foam has been glued down, I use my belt sander and my rotary tools to help refine the piece. To give this fake leather some texture, I switch over to a stone bit in the shape of a cone. This allows me to really control the amount of surface area I affect with the rotary tool. After that's complete, I lightly hit the surface again with a heat gun. Now you don't want to add too much heat because it can reactivate the spray adhesive. And just like you've seen in several other of my videos, balled up tin foil is then used to give it some additional texture. Moving on to the neck guard, I use my shoulder armor as the template for the piece that needs to be cut out. This is drawn onto some Bristol board, cut out, and then transferred to some additional 10mm HD foam. Looking at the concept art, there are two pieces that are side by side, so this process is done twice. To give this foam a recessed area for our thread, I'm going to be using a wood burning tool. To accomplish this look, I'm going to be using a round over bit on the end of my tool and setting it to the highest temperature. Just like when you're using a heat gun, you want to make sure to do this in a well ventilated area and always wear your respirator. I use rotary tools with the smooth bits to knock down the interior curve and once glued on, I go back to my cone stone bit to add that additional texture that I did on the top. I'm going to be using cord to stitch through the foam, so in this case I'm using a leather tool to properly space the holes out. Now I'm pressing very lightly and then going back with a sharpie to mark every other divot. This will ensure that my spacing is correct and then I go back with a heat gun to get rid of my marks. And to make it easier to stitch, I go ahead and just drill through the foam. This same template process is also done to the piece that attaches to the neck guard. 
The stitch holes are once again marked and drilled out. I start working on the lower pieces of the shoulder armor. These are also templated using Bristol board. A V is cut into the top of one of the templates. This will help the foam curl back on itself and give it a rounded appearance. After being transferred, cut out, and heat formed, those strips of 2mm HD foam are once again glued into place to help them retain that curve. The V at the top of the foam place is glued and pressed together and then sanded with a smooth sanding drum. You can see just how great this technique works. Just like the top section, these smaller pieces also have 2mm HD foam details that are glued onto them. Stitching holes are marked out and drilled through and you can tell that the shoulder armor is really starting to come together. Going back to my concept art, he's got two little rings on the lower armor pieces and to simulate those we're going to be using some PVC pipe. These PVC rings are cut out on my bandsaw and then sanded clean with a sanding sponge. A smooth sanding drum is used to round over the edges and that same texture is applied to these pieces as well. Now for my favorite part, we're going to be adding battle damage, and to do that I'm going to be using the edge of a small stone bit. In this step, really think about where the damage is and why it would be there. To give the foam a little bit more of a torn up look, I break out a wire brush. The wire brush is really used to help simulate the leather fraying at the edges. Because heat will continually make the foam bounce back, I go back with the tin foil one more time in selective areas just to give it some additional details. To base coat these leather pieces, I'm going to be using a mixture of Mars Black, Burnt Sienna, and Flex Bond. This is a great non-toxic alternative to using Plasti Dip. These paints are all mixed together and applied to the surface using a 1 inch mop brush. Now the only thing to watch with this process is that the flex bond gives it a thicker consistency, so I go back in with smaller brushes to remove some of the excess paint. And because I'm impatient, I speed up the drying process using my hair dryer. For my first highlight layer, I'm going to be using Liquitex brand Raw Sienna. I'm going to go ahead and mix that with some of the paints that I already have on my palette for a darker hue. The thing to note here is I don't add any water because I don't want this to get down into the details. I only want it to hit the top of the highlights. After that paint layer had dried, I went with some pure raw sienna along the perimeter of the armor and also on the tops of the half round dowels. By using the paint along the perimeters, it'll start to set up a contrast value and help visually separate the pieces. I want to give a quick shout out to all my Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much for your support. And for any of those that are purchasing my HD foam from Blick Art Materials, make sure you go through my website or the links below first because I do receive a vendor affiliate and it continues to help me do what I do. So more videos are on the way. To add some additional hues and keep the piece from looking flat, I'm going to be using Liquitex Yellow Ochre and Red Oxide. These pigments are not applied all over, only in select areas. The yellows and the reds are used to help the brown look richer. After those colors have been allowed to dry, one more light dusting of raw sienna is applied to the entire piece to give the top layer a cohesive look. Now here's a trick I learned years ago to dye my threads that I'm using for my costume. I first off pour some of the paint water that I've been using into a cup on its own. Then I go ahead and add additional paint to it to thicken it and get it to the color I want. In this case, unbleached titanium and more of the yellow ochre. I measure out the amount of string that I need for this piece and then I dunk that into the water to stain it. This actually does a really good job, but you can see the difference between the stained and unstained string. I also have this square cording that I'm going to be using for the top of the piece, and this gets dunked into the paint mixture as well. 
Using a thick leather needle, I start to sew through the holes that I had drilled previously. This is one of those final details that really starts to give this foam a leather look. The small section attached to the neck guard I shouldn't have glued on yet, so that's the great thing about foam, I rip it off and sew when I need to. On a side note, I absolutely love art books. I have a ton of them. And if you guys are a big fan of art books or video game books in general, The Art of Fallout 4 is an amazing book. I will put a link for this down in the description. I recommend it to anyone that is a fan of the game or of concept art in general. Additional thread is applied to the top piece and then once complete, that smaller section can be glued back into place. I cut small sections of the square cording by hand. These will be placed individually. The holes had already been drilled, so I add a drop of super glue and just press the cording down into the foam using the needle. When you see all the different threads together, it really does give a convincing stitched look. Working on my PVC rings, these have been primed using some black primer. And I'm going to be using Liquitex brand heavy body iridescent rich silver to give them a metallic sheen. This paint is just applied here and there using a filbert brush. I don't want it to give it an overall coating. A little bit of super glue is used to tack them into place and more of the dyed string is used to sew around them. This process was repeated and applied to both the upper and lower sections. For a finished costume I'd use nylon strips, but for this demonstration I'm just using some 2mm foam. Now normally I don't seal any of my paint chops, but I want this leather to have a little bit of a shine. So I lightly apply some Krylon gloss sealer and remove some of the excess with my hand. This gives the leather a shine in some spots and a matte look in others. So you guys can see some of the basic steps that it takes to not only fabricate, but distress your foam to make it look like leather. And these are the types of tips that I love putting out there because you don't have to necessarily make this shoulder piece. You can implement these techniques into future builds. And if you guys are enjoying these videos, be sure to give them a thumbs up, share them with your friends and family. And remember, if you're building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I love seeing your progress. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD phone.